All right, this is how to change your Glock sights from the plastic ones to really whatever you want. Um, on the cheap, it's still gonna be an investment, but you'll be able to change sights on multiple different guns and stuff. And it's not gonna break the bank, um, but it's not gonna be free really either. Um, we're gonna use this cheap, it's like a $35 sight pusher. Um, you put your slide in there and then you have the the turn bar up top okay so we're going to be going from the standard plastic ones to the steel version all right so i'm going to use a vise to hold the sight pusher in place uh you don't have to do it but it will make it a little bit easier um it's one less thing to hold so you're going to need that your new set of sights I recommend some oil to uh, oil the threads like it says here and to put into the dovetail for the sights. Um, using a cheap tool like this you're definitely going to want to protect your surfaces so get some painters tape. Cheaper masking tape will work fine too but the painters tape sticks better to the parts that you're going to be taping. And then I recommend a socket set to go on here and it'll make life easier. So, step number one, get that set up in the vise. Then we're going to take down the Glock here. It is clear. Safe direction. I'm going to put you down. Going to go ahead and take out the recoil spring and the barrel. We just need the bare slide. I'm going to put tape over the serrations and I'll show you that when it's done. Okay, I have the slide all taped up. It's important that you don't go past the dovetail there. That side's pushing it, but it's pretty clear up there. You want it real close to that dovetail, but not going over top. You don't want the tape jamming everything up as you try to remove the sight or um, install the replacement. So you, it's best to push this from left to right that way. Um, so we're going to push it from left to right, and then we're going to push the new sight in from that direction over here right to left so um, this tool has a slanted side and a flat side I actually prefer the flat side it helps me line everything up a little bit better um, so I'm gonna go ahead and zip this in there carefully clamp it down and I'll give you an update when that part of the process is done okay I got this lined up here um, you want it to pretty much hit the center of the dovetail and you want it to be close to the base But not touching your slide if it's touching your slide It's going to be more resistance and you're going to scratch the shit out of your slide So make sure you're pretty centered in that dovetail um, Make sure you're relatively low and Then you're going to be ready to push it out a um, couple things to note This just has kind of one of these crappy bolts on the end so you want to make sure when you're pushing the direction you want to push and actually now that I think about it this is kind of going backwards um, since this is the plastic site it doesn't matter a whole lot I'm just going to jam it out right to left but you want to make sure that you're turning this uh, righty tighty instead of lefty loosey otherwise that nut will pop off so um, yeah so I'm going to put this in here um, so that I'll be pushing the site from left to right. I want to make sure I'm getting the the pusher pretty close to the base of the site and relatively centered in the dovetail. And then I'm going to tighten this down and we put the tape on so we don't mar it. Um, with this design we have a nut on the end and the bolt going through here. So you want to make sure that when you're putting tension on that sight, you're screwing righty-tighty instead of lefty-loosey. Lefty-loosey will just make that nut pop off. So once we're all aligned, we got that tightened down. We're ready to engage. I'm using a socket to make this process easier. Now I highly recommend that you do what I'm going to do to protect your sight as you install the new one. This is just the plastic one. I'm going to throw it away so I don't care if I mar it up. But I'm going to work it out. I'm 
once you kind of feel the tension drift away, it should come out on its own the rest of the way. So that looks good. Back that thread out. Check it. And it pops out. So I'm going to get that far out of the way. Loosen up my bolt here. That comes out. Okay, the sights have these two marks on the back. And that's the mark I just put on it. Now that would totally scratch your sights if, uh, if you don't protect it. So now we're going to flip the slide into the pusher so that the pusher is going the same direction but uh, we're, we're doing the opposite kind of movement if you follow me. I'm going to get it started there. Um, it's important that you put that in before you clamp down here. And I'm going to be careful not to mar it up but I want to get it centered into the dovetail. relatively low but I don't want it touching this base here either it looks pretty good make sure that's firm and now so I don't scratch the now so I don't scratch the rear sight I'm gonna create like a little tape piece um, relatively thick to um, be a barrier between the sight and the actual pusher itself and that way, it, the, the other thing about the uh, tape is it's kind of mushy, so it'll be able to bite into that tape um, without actually damaging the rear sight. So, getting my tape ball formed up. You can't go too big because then, then it, uh, it won't fit in very well and whatnot, but you still want it, generally speaking, the bigger the better. So, there's that. I'm going to slide that in there. Make sure that it's, uh, get a closer up on that. Make sure that you have a good amount of cushion for that site. Then I'm going to give some oil into the dovetail. Make sure my socket's going to be going righty-tighty. And we're going to... You'll start to feel the tension build as you get into that tape. And then your sight will slowly start to push. Something important to note, you may need to do a little bit of filing on your rear sight depending on the brand. I've upgraded to the steel version of this cup and ball setup from Glock a couple times. And in my experience, this particular site goes into the dovetails just fine. But some of them, like maybe the Trigicon or the Ameriglos, they tend to get a little bit tighter. So if you feel like you're giving too much resistance and you might be marring that site, you might want to file a little bit of that base off. So I'm just going to work this in here get it to where I think it's going to be lined up and then from there it's pretty much a guess and check. So I have it about as far as I want to go. It's a little tight so I'm going to use my socket to back that out a little bit. And it's better when you're doing this the first time to go a little bit under than over because if you go over you're going to have to flip the slide. So we got that backed out. I'm going to remove my tape looks like I didn't mar my sight at all which is great and if I look at it it looks like I just went a little too far over if I can get you to focus so I just need to bring it back this way so I'm gonna flip the slide over and give it a couple couple turns so I went ahead flipped the slide around I'm gonna double check make sure I got everything lined up one thing I forgot to mention, it's a good habit to give the threads a little bit of oil. Um, just helps minimize the friction. So that looks good in the dovetail. Back it out so I can put my spacer back in. Now that was marred up so I just, maybe you can see that black part underneath. That was like some dirt, some oil. Um, I just put another layer on to, uh, 
to just, you know, give it a little more cushion. So, get my socket ready to go. Once again, you'll feel that tension build as you hit the tape. And using this pusher, this is where it gets hard because if you go over, it's hard to tell when it's just building pressure on the tape and when it's actually moving that sight. So you just got to take it slow and carefully. All right, there, now it was starting to move the sight. Back that out. Uh, it's a little bit hard of an angle for me to look at. Looks like we went too far. I'm going to pull this out and take a look. Actually, that might be pretty good. I think I'm happy with that, so I'm going to call it on the rear. We successfully installed that, and looks like I have some very light marring on the finish of these sights, but you really have to look to see. So the solution to that would just be make your tape just a little bit bigger, and also make sure that it's uh, uniform in how thick it is. Like. Mine is a little bit thinner right here, and that may have led to that marring. But all in all, not bad at all, and you really do have to look for it. So then I'll take my tape off of the slide. By the way, tape going over top was just to hold everything in place. Um, it wasn't doing the best job sticking to my slide. So Okay, so doing a double check, and it looks pretty good to me. We could get a set of calipers and check it, but I'm not going to get that anal about it. If I have problems at the range, I can make adjustments down the road, and that's the beauty of owning one of these tools versus going to a gunsmith. And I just hate the idea of taking a punch to it, especially if you're doing uh, tritium sights. But, like I was saying, minimal uh, wearing of the finish. You can see that one light spot there. And you know what, they might even rub off with a little bit of oil and that one white spot there. But um, that's it for the front. Um, I'm sorry, the rear. We're done. Uh, the CLP in that dovetail definitely helped. And you can see where my tape is. That line, that's all going to end up rubbing away with some oil. Okay, so don't worry about the tape. Uh, the painter's tape is designed to be used on paint, and that's another reason we use it. Um, it won't it won't strip your finish so now next step is the front sight this one doesn't have a screw it's just like all molded plastic so this one we can just get a pair of pliers and yank it or just kind of push it through the bottom um, if yours has a screw you need one of those screw tools which you're going to need to re install the replacement front sight anyway so uh, let's get on to that all right so now for the front sight like i said Mine doesn't have the screw like the replacement is. My plastic sight just um, is press fit, so I can just pull that out. And um, if this one comes out, I don't think it's able to be put back in, but you can see that's all one piece. Um, tools you're going to need for this are the Glock front sight tool. There's different versions. Some are made better, better than others, uh, but they pretty much all can get the job done. The magnetic ones are nicer. Um, so we're going to use that. We have the replacement front sight, of course. And you want to clean that hole. And you're going to need some Loctite, too. So to clean that surface area, I'm going to use some Remington Action Cleaner. Uh, it breaks down oils and solvents and stuff. And then it evaporates relatively quickly so uh, you definitely don't want a bunch of gunk in that so the uh, evaporative
properties of this action cleaner is gonna is gonna be good. So we're gonna clean it, and uh, we're gonna try and clean up in the front side as best we can. Doesn't have to be perfect. You just want the threads and the Loctite to grip as best as possible. So I actually forgot my Loctite. So give me a sec. I always recommend blue. This is Vibratite, not even actual Loctite. Um, it doesn't really matter in my opinion what brand you use. They all pretty much do the same thing as long as you're not using the red kind. So the blue will hold everything in place but still allow you to remove it when you need to. So I'm just going to put a solid bead. Come and get a close up of this. A solid bead on the tip of the screw. Then I'm going to kind of drop that in. Had a little bit run off there, so I'm going to add a little more. The excess is kind of going to ooze out, and I'm just going to give that a good wipe down afterwards. So I have the front side on top. I'm going to find that hole, and I'm going to try and thread it in. I'm having a, a fail here, so bear with me. I'm going to set that down on the table this time. And um, actually. Having a little bit of a retard moment. Alright, the best way I've found doing this in the past is if you can get this set up straight, which I can't seem to do today, then you bring the sight to it. And the only problem is finding the hole, but once you find it, it should go on pretty smooth. It looks like I got it started. Okay, so I screwed it down until it's flush, okay, um, but that doesn't necessarily mean my sight is straight. Looks like I may have gotten lucky, that looks pretty straight to me, no, okay. Um, if you can see that is crooked a little bit coming this way. So I'm going to just loosen it a little bit to where I can adjust, and I'm just going to kind of guess and check. Trying to get that on there straight. Looks like I'm going a little bit the opposite way now. So, just back it out a hair. Make a very minute adjustment. And then re-tighten. And it may take a couple times. But, you know, that's okay. Don't make it too tight until you think you got it, but you want it firm enough that it won't move on you at the same time. That looks pretty good to me. Gonna give it a little bit more look. Gonna line the sights up. Once again, I could get a pair of calipers and measure from the edge, but um, that looks good to me. So now I'm just going to get my tool, do a little bit of a final crank, and I think I'm happy with that. So I have a little bit of leftover blue residue in the bottom. I'm going to wipe that. Make sure that there isn't any along the site. And if you can't see any more, you should be good. Give it a reassemble.
and uh, I'm just going to kind of look down the sights, make sure everything feels right. And uh, it looks pretty good. So that's changing the sights. Um, another good thing to know, in case you don't, this is a Glock 21 45, uh, one of the larger frame ones. There are three different rear sight heights, so make sure you get the right one for your gun. Um, that's it. So, total tool cost, the front sight tool is about six, seven dollars, at least the one that I purchased. Like I said, the rear sight pusher I think is about 35, maybe 40 bucks. Plus your pair of sights and hopefully you have the rest of the tools to get the job done. Um, the great thing about doing it this way though is if you need to make an adjustment after shooting at the range you can. Um, I've done um, about five different Glocks with that tool and it's still working just fine. So uh, if you have a couple guns you want to do it to it's definitely worth the, uh, the 35 40 bucks to do it. So, Alright thanks for watching hope this helped. Take care.